Thrilled to have him back here. Six years in the U.S. Army, accepted into the Green Berets. The University of Texas let him go back and forth to uh, serve our country as well as long snap for the program where he was an academic All-American. The Seattle Seahawks welcomed into their camp in 2015 when he co-founded the Merging Vets and Players organization with Jay Glazer. Good to see you, Nate Boyer. It's good to see you, Rich. How are you, brother? I'm doing pretty good. Good. No, com- well, I got a lot of complaints, but I'm not going to share them. Okay, well, you <laughs> you have you would have the floor if, if you wanted to. Um, let's get just jump right into this thing uh, with what's going on in the National Football League and the national anthem. And how often do you speak to Colin Kaepernick? Do you in contact with him much? Not, no, not currently, not currently, and not not because there's any you know bad blood or anything like that. Uh, just kind of different paths, I think. But we, we spoke. You know, through the 2016, 2017 season, mm-hmm. uh, when he was still playing, and then even the you know the following little bit of the following year, I guess which was last season. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, not directly. I've talked to you know I'd spoken with Eric Reed some last year, and and uh, a lot of other players in the league. I mean Malcolm Jenkins and Doug Baldwin, and some of these other guys that are obviously Chris Long's a really good friend. That if well, what's your conversations about with these guys? Um, yeah. Well, initially, uh, you, you know, it was it was. When everybody was, first of all, there was a lot more players protesting last year. It was a lot different. Um, but it, it's been about, you know, the work done off the field. That's the most important thing to me. Um, and, and I've continued to push for, you know, a lot of them to, to share that stuff. And it's, it's a tricky place to be because sometimes, you know, people feel weird about, I don't, I don't want to say like, it can sound like boasting in a, in a sense of like, look what I'm doing charity wise or whatever. But for this situation, it's really important to share what you're doing, you know, what programs you're involved with or initiatives you've started uh, off the field. If, because there's so many people that continue to say, oh, these players, do, you know, wh- why do they have to do it at that time? Can't they protest on their own time? What do they do the rest of the week? I don't see them doing anything in the off season. We don't see them protesting. I'm like, why would they protest in the off season? Like, what do you mean? They, they just, I think a lot of them, have this idea. A lot of people have this uh, this false narrative that these players are protesting the national anthem, not during the national anthem, and they're not doing anything else. You know, the other uh, 350 whatever days of the year. Well, and I want to get into that a little bit more in a second, but just to flesh out in a way your um, history with this. How did you get hooked up with Kaepernick? Because you were the one who told him, "Hey, instead of sitting, how about kneeling?" Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, this was. So it's it's September, late August, early September, 2016. It's you know the middle of the election, and it's like Trump versus Clinton, and you know everyone's just we're already we've already been slowly dividing over the last decade. It feels like, but it was just more and more and very intense at that time. And then Colin, you know, sits on the bench uh, for the third game in a row, and finally somebody. I think some reporter asked him, like, what, why are you sitting yeah, Steve Weich from the NFL Network. That's correct. Not, just, from up not top. just some reporter. Good well, call. you know. He's a good guy. He's a really good guy. I should have known we're, that. Yeah. He's on my team. He's on your team. <laughs> he's, he's the real deal. Right. You know, and, and Colin said, I'm not going to stand for, a, for the flag of a country that oppresses black people and people of color. And, of course, with everything going on already, that just was, you know, uh, another match on the gasoline. And huge uproar. You know, it's like everyone immediately takes their side, you know, digs in Mm -hmm. and it's like, it's like red team versus blue team or whatever you want to call it. And, uh, I got reached out to by a few different publications to, to write something, you know, some pretty, pretty big ones. And they wanted me to write an opinion piece. And I think what they kind of wanted or expected was, you know, I'm going to tell Colin why he should stand or why he has to stand or whatever. And instead, I agreed, to, I agreed finally to write something with uh, the Army Times, which is a very small publication that, no offense to the Army Times, but not a lot of people read it. Sure. Um, and the reason I did is because they said, you can do any format you want. Um, you know, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's all you, like whatever you want, and we will, you know, we'll, we'll push it. And so I, I wrote this open letter to Colin that all it did was explain my history, personal history, you know, my relationship to what those symbols stand for. And... Also, I thought it was important to kind of ask the question, you know, why through that letter and, and help him, not help him, but um, allow him the opportunity to, um, to not only just read about why I feel that way, but also sort of 
uh, feel like he can can answer, you know, answer back and 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 possibly uh, have a dialogue. You know, work together. Yeah, have a dialogue. And and so he, and he reached out. You know, I, I I wrote that letter. It it got shared by a lot of sports. Actually, a lot of sports writers it was the reason uh, that it that it got out well, there. Well, I mean, because you're a a football player. Kind of. With, well, no, no. A long, <laughs> hey, long snappers are people too, as you know, right? That's, right. That's true. Okay, and representing uh, Texas. Yeah. And uh, also, what six tours of duty? Correct? Did you have six? Uh, I did go overseas six times. Six three, times. three combat tours. But okay. yes, you know, okay. I so a bunch. right, yeah. ten, so ten years total. Put six. The, put yeah. that all together, and obviously, you're going to be on the radar screen of a lot right. of people, okay. and Fair. and still are obviously today. So, um, what what was what was the conversation that you had that caused him to just say, okay, I'm, I'm going to kneel now. Cause that's what everybody, the whole conversation you hear it now, it's now boiled down to players are kneeling on the flag. Right. Right. It's now yeah. been boiled down to something that is completely unnuanced. Right. In the most nuanced conversation we may have as an American populace it's true. It's involving true. sports. Um, so how did that work? Yeah. So, so it got shared around, you know, that night, uh, the next day I'm, I'm, I'm going to go on NFL Network and do my first interview about it. And I'm pretty nervous about that. And I'm in the green room, and Colin's publicist called me and said he wants to sit down with you tomorrow before the game. And I was like, really? Wow, okay. Um, so I, I jumped in an Uber from L.A. to San Diego and uh, the next day and met him down there in the lobby of the team hotel like four hours before kickoff. And, and Chip Kelly was a coach at the time, and he was like, you know, please you know, have this conversation. I think it's important. And and we sat down and Eric Reed joined us and we just talked about, you know, our, our shared experiences, our different experiences. Um, also, he, you know, he explained in, in detail about why he was doing it for, for anybody that doesn't know at this point, which it's crazy if you don't, uh, and you're following this story, but you know, it was um, police brutality, um, you know, the criminal justice system and its uh, shortcomings and uh, racial inequality essentially. And, you know, by the end of the conversation, it was to a point where, you know, he was very gracious towards me and was, was thankful for, you know, or shared with me how grateful he was for my service and mm -hmm. for time in, 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 you know, he had friends doing the same, but also, you know, I wanted to share with him some viewpoints of other people in the veteran community. And I, and I showed some messages that affected him quite a bit, you know, and I could tell by the way he reacted, like it, it, uh, it, it kind of opened his minds and slowed him down a little bit. And he, uh, he asked me if there was another way to demonstrate, another way that he could. He said, I'm not going to stand. Like, I, I vowed to do that, and until things start to change or I feel like stuff's in motion, uh, I'm not going to change that. And he asked me if there was another way, and, and I suggested, first and foremost, to do something alongside his teammates. I thought that was very important because whether they agree with you or not, right? we need to be together on stuff. We need to be more unified as a country, and I think that's a good symbol. And and that's when I, uh, you know, thought of of kneeling just because it's more of a sign of reverence. Um, we, you know, we kneel, kneel to pray, propose to our wives. Um, when a player's hurt on the field, everyone takes a knee. It's it's always a pretty respectful gesture, as far as I know. And uh, he thought that was more powerful than sitting, and, and he agreed to do that. And that that night, he did it for the first time in the game, and I, I stood next to him on the field. And, yeah. You were there, you know, and then since then we <laughs> we've gone back to like you said, it's just this focus on who's protesting and what's their form of protest. What's the gesture, not what's behind it. Nate Boyer here on the Rich Eisen Show, and in that regard, uh, before we move on to merging vets and players uh, uh, and vetsandplayers.org, um, you mentioned how it's important for players to show what they're doing in the community, even if they're running the risk of it being. Uh, uh, on the other end of an accusation of of being self-serving. Right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Kenny Stills, who is one of the only few remaining players to be kneeling during right. the national anthem right now in Miami, tweeted out photographs of him meeting with veterans and hanging with veterans this past week. Marco Rubio, the senator from Florida, retweeted it. We were putting it up on the on the television screen here. You know, Marco Rubio said, no NFL player does more community service than K Stills of the Miami Dolphins. You don't have to agree with how or why he has chosen to exercise the First Amendment before every game to acknowledge the hours he gives voluntarily on his day off to serve his fellow Americans. And then on the same day, the, uh, the famed Quinnipiac College put out a poll 
with a plus or minus uh, error of almost 4%, showing that from last November to this very date, that there has been a five-point change in the way Americans view the kneeling during the national anthem as a form of protest. It went from 47% disapprove to 50, 50, uh, 47% disapprove and 42% approve to now being split down the middle at 47%. Do you think that there has been a change in the country the way that this is being viewed, Nate Boyer? Yeah, I do. And, and what I've experienced, and, and, and obviously I've been sort of a lightning rod for a lot of this, so a lot of the, <laughs> I've received a lot of comments from people on, on both sides of this issue that have been, you know, very negative and very you know, hurtful and just attacks and stuff. But more than that, uh, throughout these last two years, I've seen a lot of people, and I've got a lot of messages from people that have said, you know, I never thought about it from that perspective, whether it's from a conservative perspective or a liberal perspective. And now I'm listening more and I'm trying to, to understand more and just be more open-minded because that's something I, I continue to I try to push towards people and, and help them understand like open-mindedness is not necessarily synonymous with like liberal values and patriotism right. isn't synonymous with uh, conservative. conservative values. Sure. You, you should and can be both. Uh, in in my opinion, and uh, and I think, yeah, I mean that's a really cool. I haven't seen that stat. That's actually really interesting. And um, you know, Marco Rubio is obviously a conservative voice, and for him to to share that, that's cool. Like we need to see more of that, you know. And uh, yeah, I definitely encourage that. So let's talk about merging vets and players. An organization you you uh, you form with Glaze, right? Jay Glazer, he's got a huge heart. Man, do I love that guy. Uh, he's got a huge head too. He does. He's just huge. Yeah. Yeah. He's not tall. Uh, he's a stout man. He's a <laughs> he's a stout man. Yep, I agree. He's I don't want to say robust. anything anymore. I'd love to see. Robust. I'd love. To, I'd love to see his robust. workout regimen to see how it uh, dovetails with uh, with Mark Wahlberg's. Um, he doesn't get up at two thirty. <laughs> yeah. He's in the still morning, up at two thirty. At vetsandplayers org, tell people what this is about and how they can get involved. Yeah, it's awesome, Nate. So it, you know, it was it was spawned. Uh, it's actually three years ago. Well, almost three years ago. Yep. Uh, it was after you know I'd been cut from the Hawks and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do next. And I thought about going back into the military and, and Jay and I were having these similar conversations, Jay with a lot of professional athletes and me with, with more veterans about people are, you know, people reach out all the time. And a lot of them reach out to, to Jay about, Hey, I'm, I'm done playing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble finding a purpose and feeling that same excitement about life as I had before. And veterans obviously, you know, feel that way. And I think we're very aware that of that as a country what, that struggles with transitions. What and, next? What next? I mean, Tony Gonzalez came to MVP just last month and he talked about, I mean, I think 17 years, obviously probably the greatest tight end that ever played the game. And, you know, he, he was at dinner with his wife three months after he retired and he just broke down, you know, and she was like, what's wrong? And he's like, I will, I'll never be great again. No matter what I do, I will never be that great again. And that's like really scary. Veterans feel that same way. It's that being part of a mission uh, that's very important, something that's so much bigger than you, the camaraderie, um, but also the, 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 the highs that you experience, you know, especially being in combat. I mean, it's, I know it's, it's frightening and it's hard to relate that to anything else, but, in, you know, if you've been in that situation um, and you survived it, like those feelings, it's hard to replicate anything like that. And, uh, and, and there's just, there's, I mean, 22 veterans a day are taking their own lives. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's a huge epidemic in our country. And without organizations like MVP, I mean, the VA does what it can. Sure. You know, it's, it's very hamstrung in a lot of ways. And there's 20 million veterans, if you go back to World War II, uh, in our country today. Um, we need groups like this that bring all of us back together, you know. And, and, and the thing about athletes and, and combat vets, granted, what we did on the field, battlefield, football field, whatever, it's so different. But the transition is very similar. Um, that locker room is identical, I'll tell you that. And, uh, you know, just that, that, that camaraderie and needing that connection again uh, to what you did before, but also, you know, pushing that forward uh, and finding the next challenge and, and, you know, just being a warrior moving forward with your life. Yeah, that's why you, Nate Boyer, and, and Jay Glazer form this. And you go to vetsandplayers.org, find out if there's one in your area, correct? I mean, because so, there's, the fo there's focus groups, there's yeah. ways to get together, there's 
what job summits and things of everything that nature, i mean right? so we're Workouts. right now we're, we're in we're in los angeles vegas and we just opened in chicago and That's and great. because the, you know the nfl is on board now which is huge so we've got you know the uh, uh the the nfl you know the alumni associations and the and the player engagement that have, that have made donations we've had you know mike mccarthy foundation cut us a big check the falcons are on board now like we are growing and we're going to be everywhere every nfl city is the goal and we'll be there within a few years fantastic it is fantastic. That's great. Thank man. you. And you're going to Austin this weekend? I am. There's a pretty big Longhorns football game. in USC? Yeah, it's a couple uh, teams that are trying to find themselves again. Just talk about the struggle with the transition. Uh, we'll get there. But yeah, it's still it's a great rivalry, obviously. And uh, yeah, I'll be in Austin, the greatest city in America. Were you, I'm just trying to figure out your, your history, were you overseas during the USC Texas big game? With I was, Vince actually, Young, in, I was actually in training. Uh, I was not overseas, but I was in training. I was out in the field, uh, and they let us. They gave us a break for that game, and we watched it. Like the the squad I was on, it was uh, God, it was probably twenty something of us at the time. We watched it on this little nineteen inch TV, mm -hmm. and I'm you know I grew up in the Bay Area. I'm a California guy. I'd never lived in Texas. I pulled for USC. Sure, which you is were in a Longhorn, yeah. yeah. And a Texas buddy of mine, he goes to bed at the end of the you know th third quarter, or whatever, when they were down couple scores because he was like oh it's over I, yeah he just quit and uh, i stayed i woke him up in the morning i'm like you know texas won right and he's like no i'm like yeah so that that was the beginning of my love affair with the longhorns with the longhorns well right. but they broke your heart first is what you're saying in a way i mean they did I, I mean i wasn't a usc fan Not, okay i just was pulling for them for regional reasons okay you know, and now it. here you are you're going there uh so anybody who else mcconaughey'll be there i'm sure right yeah yeah of course he's gonna He'll be, he's hitting me up like crazy. I see. What do you mean he's hitting you up like I'm crazy? I'm just kidding. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> he's aware of who I am, I think. Well, that's let's get it. you guys together yeah. this weekend. He's a good dude. He's he a good is, guy. I I'm know. Just teasing. He's a diehard long. Well, look, there's a picture of you with him standing yeah, next to each yeah, other. I, he's in a jacket. You're in a uniform. He's like, why is this guy standing so close to me? <laughs> <laughs> I do look a lot bigger than him there, though. Come on, like Nate. That. Yeah. Yeah. He's looking ripped. I think right that's, there. That's, that's Dallas Buyers Club. Uh, That's time oh, frame, yeah, yeah. You know, he was he was losing weight for this slender. role. I see what you're saying. Good to see you, Nate. You too. Come Rich. back anytime. Of course. Please Thank do you, it. Bro. At Nate Boyer 37 it. to follow uh, Nate's uh, uh, exploits. exploits on Twitter. <laughs> at Jinx. Vetsandplayers.org is how you can get involved with Merging Vets and Players, which is a great organization. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.